Hello everyone and welcome back to our adventure through thermodynamics. And this time we're in chapter two, which is all about energy, energy, energy. And since this is thermodynamics, mostly that's heat energy, but we gotta learn about a whole lot of other types too. So let's jump right into this. Now to begin, I'm going to be asking you two questions that are probably gonna blow your mind. So what I have right here is a refrigerator. It's in a well-sealed and well-insulated room, which means no heat goes out and no heat goes in. We're not gonna allow that, that's not gonna happen. And as a note, usually we use Q, which means heat. Now if I have a well-sealed and well-insulated room, this is also something that's called adiabatic. So I'm going ahead and giving you some definitions here, but not to worry, we're gonna be seeing these quite a bit. Okay, so in this well-sealed, well-insulated magical room, I have a refrigerator, and you stored your pineapple there, your melon, some cereal. Don't get why you put cereal in a fridge, but if you do that, let me know, is there a reason? That, should I be doing that? Leave mine in the pantry. By the way, for some strange reason, you just decide, you know what? I just wanna make all that food go bad, so you leave the doors open to your fridge. And my question is, this open refrigerator, is it going to heat or cool the room? Heat or cool the room? Now, I'm not going to answer that yet because I've got a second question for you with an equally important answer. So in this question, I have a fan. We turn it on, it's blowing, it feels nice. Ah, you put your face in front of it, it feels so cool. Once again, we're in that well-sealed, well-insulated room. And my question for all of you is, will this heat or cool your room? Will it heat or cool the room? Now the amazing and incredible answer to both these things is that the answer is that in both cases, it will actually heat up your room. Now, since we're taking this room right here to be a control volume, what we're saying is that heat is not leaving. Since it can't go out, I have to think to myself, well, heat can't go out, which means it's gonna stay there. Okay, so you're thinking, well, just because the heat's staying there doesn't mean it's heating up. And you're right in that regard. You might also be thinking that, well, it's just cold, so it's just moving the heat from inside the refrigerator to outside, so it's not like any heat's being added. And just the process of moving it itself, maybe not. But one thing we know for a fact will tell us that this room will heat up. And that's that we have an electrical cord. And there is energy flowing in from that electricity into our system. And because the energy is going up, the temperature is also going to go up eventually. Now, if you're wondering where that comes from, there's various places. For a refrigerator, it has these little coils on the back of them. That's actually how it removes the heat. If you look at the back of your fridge, you'll see something like this. And if you actually stand next to your fridge with the doors closed, preferably, you'll notice that it actually feels warm next to it. It's not cold next to a refrigerator. It's warm next to a refrigerator. The reason for that is because it's expelling heat from the out inside to the outside. Now, a little part of this guy is down at the bottom, you'll hear a compressor. Sometimes it'll rattle, and uh, maybe even a pump down here. I'll put these little circle things to match those up. And those guys, as they are pushing the fluid through your, you know, the refrigerant through your system, cooling down your refrigerator, they are also producing heat. And so since they're producing heat, no matter what, if I don't have any heat leaving the system, I'm going to have the temperature increase. And I think, well, what about that fan? You know, the fan doesn't seem like it'd be the same thing. The fan's doing just the exact same thing. One, the motor right there is going to get hot, okay? Its temperature is going to increase. And if the temperature of the motor increases, then it means that the room is gonna increase if no heat can leave. But even if I had a perfect motor, a magical motor that never got hot, it was always the same temperature. This is an incredible motor, people. Just by it moving and circulating the air, I would increase the temperature because that's what temperature is. Temperature is all about a molecule here, and it's bouncing around. The faster it bounces, the, more, um, the higher the temperature. The slower it bounces, the lower the temperature. And so when I add kinetic energy to it, Ke is what we use for kinetic energy, that means that the temperature is going to increase. Maybe not right at the beginning, but eventually, the more I do that, the more random motion I'll have, the more temperature in the room, so long as heat is not allowed to leave. So this is where we start. We're already learning some amazing things which are telling us that energy it doesn't go anywhere. It doesn't just magically disappear. It can be turned from one form to another. Um, but if we have energy going into a room and it can't leave the room, that's already gonna be changing our system. So next time we're gonna be jumping into different forms of energy. We're gonna figure out how they change from one form to another. 
and we're going to start learning about how we deal with those forms and where we see those forms of energy. So thank you so much for listening. Look forward to seeing you all next time. Have a great day.